people. Yeah. Well, the other one that I was looking at was Floyd Mayweather and Floyd Mayweather has kind of an amazing, uh, bet on himself story like this too. Like you, you probably know it, but I don't know if most people know boxers in general, uh, you know, UFC fighters make basically nothing. And, uh, with like, you know, one or two exceptions, and then boxers kind of make more boxers can make, you know, 10 million, 20 million in a fight. And they can do that once or twice a year. That's great. That seemed like the top. And what Floyd Mayweather did was he was like, who the hell is making all this money? Cause I see that crowd is full of people and the pay-per-view number is huge, but like, where does the money go? And the re reality was that the money would go to the promoters and it would go to the cable companies. It would go to all these other people. The, and so he decided to bet on himself. So he buys out his contract. He spent, he takes $750,000 out of pocket and buys himself out of top rank, which was the promoter that promoted Oscar De La Hoya and Manny Pacquiao, all these guys. And he starts, you know, Mayweather promotions. And now his business model is like, basically it's, it's vertical integration, right? Like it's to use the business school term. He's like, okay, I'm not just going to be the talent. I'm also going to be the production for the show, which means that I also collect the live gate revenue, which means that I also have to pay the other fighter. Like I have to, I have to write the check. Um, I'm also going to own a piece of the pay-per-view. I'm going to make it. He's like, I'm going to make money on every hot dog sold in this venue. I'm going to make money on the merch. I'm going to make money everywhere. And so because of that, now when he does a fight, like his, um, Manny Pacquiao fight, his uh, Conor McGregor fights, he's pulling in somewhere between 250 and $400 million. That's crazy. Himself on those fights per fight. So he, you know, more than 10 X, more like 20 X what he could make by betting on himself and building that brand. And then, then he created all the associated brands. So then he basically created, he's like, why am I, these sponsors are paying me to wear their shit. You know, why don't I just create, you know, the money team clothing line and I'm going to like own my own clothing line rather than promoting these other clothing lines. LeBron did the same thing. He's like, why am I promoting McDonald's? He bought equity in Blaze Pizza and is like, cool, I'll just own a piece of this chain rather than just be a sponsored athlete. Um, and so there's there's basically a bunch of a bunch of people who do this model. And then Floyd, you know, he did a, he did a couple things. One was he went nuts on the self branding, so he changed his brand from Pretty Boy Floyd to Floyd Money Mayweather. And he knew and, that people uh, were gonna hate that. He knew that people were gonna hate it, and he started doing hateable things. Like he would just post a photo of himself, like at a dinner table, but there's no food on the table. It's just stacks of cash everywhere. <laughs> He's like, this is how I eat or whatever. Right? <laughs> or, you know, he would, um, you know, just go throw like a, you know, a wad of cash at somebody and just like make fun of them because they're poor. And like, they would pick up the dollars because they're like, well, this is like 10 grand. And so like he would do things that would get attention. He would do things that would be his brand. But in reality, he would look like this party, like this party guy. He owns strip clubs, never smoke, never drank. You know, like the guy trains at like three in the morning. So, you know, he kind of built this brand like he's this kind of like badass or whatever. But in reality, he's like a very, he's like a extremely well-conditioned athlete that was like extremely disciplined and never like ran into any of those problems. But he hired Al Heyman, who Al had run. You know, Dude, who he's Al like, is? He, he's like, we have to do a whole episode on on this because Al Heyman's really intriguing. Al Heyman, if you Google his face, there's like four pictures of him on the Internet. And he's one of these guys, I think he's like famous for like, you never meet him in person, but he does everything on the phone. And he's always in the background of the most powerful boxers and fighters in the world. And before that, you know what he was doing? No. He was doing the same thing in the music industry. So he represented Janet Jackson, Whitney Houston, helped build their brands and their their whole business empires. Then he taught Floyd how, the mus how musicians make their money. And he's like, oh, I need to do that. Basically, my fight is me on tour. I need to own the tour. And so I need to own the shows. I need to make the money from the tickets, not just be the fighter who goes on the stage. And so Al became his business guy on that side. And then he has Leonard Ellerby who does it on the, on the Mayweather promotion side. And like the joke, of course, about Floyd is that he can't read. And it's like, he's like, I can't read, but I, I know numbers. And like, you know, <laughs> and so he's like, you know, he, he know, he know, he's found a way to make a ton of money. He understood like the core fundamentals of, of business. Um, and knew how to put put people in place, and so he generates a lot of money. Now, some people think he's going broke because he spends so much. I think he might be. Like, I totally you know, believe that, that. That's hard to say, dude. I I totally believe that. This podcast, we we are the internet dork renaissance. We started with Adam Levine cheating on his wife, and then I think we went to like uh, the history of hedge RSU funds, RSU option shares, yeah, and then RSU <laughs> option shares. Then we talked about the Fed and J.P. Morgan. 
And then back to Mayweather and Al Heyman. You can't get this anywhere else. You, you just yeah. can't. Where they're, are you going to get all this? Yeah. yeah you know, <laughs> we, we are the Chinese buffet of podcasts. <laughs> yeah. They say that like true wealth is created by being like a narrow, uh, an inch, uh, uh, an inch wide, but like a mile deep. Not here. We are, we are, a, we are right. a, a rain puddle. We are just going to cover everything just a little bit. Well, you built your whole life off being four inches long. So it all worked out for you at the end. <laughs> yeah. And, and you me. get comedy at the end of the show. And you get the comedy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> average at best in, in lots of different... If you're average at best at just about everything, you're kind of above average. So it works out well. <laughs> all right. That's, uh, that's the show.